What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about Dormammu. Now, I'm a huge fan of Dormammu. I have been for a very long time. I remember when Dormammu first came to the game, he actually had a different profile. So the profile Dormammu has right now is different from the one he originally had. If I can find a picture of it, I'll put it on the screen and show you. I'm in the camp of preferring the original profile picture. Maybe that's just me, but personally, I, I like that one more than the one he has currently. But that's neither here nor there. That's not the point of the video. The point of the video is to talk about how Dormammu was almost great. He was almost a good character, but just falls short in the department of damage. Because there's one thing Dormammu doesn't really lack, and it's utility. Dormammu has a lot of good utility. But he comes from an era of Contest of Champions where it was extremely rare to have a champion with both damage and utility. It was typically one or the other. And even in the modern day, that's still necessarily true. I, I, I wouldn't say it's untrue in the more modern characters like even uh champions like anti-venom who came out in i believe 2020 or 2021 they are champions that you know they have both in the kit but you have to choose which one you want damage or utility so that design philosophy it's evolved over time but it still has its has its claws in certain characters even in the modern age but dormammu he was always a decent defender, right? Especially when he first came out, especially when Mystic Dispersion was still functioning in the way it was. So if you don't know this, if you're kind of a newer player, Mystic Dispersion used to trigger every time you trigger Dexterity. So every time you trigger a Dex, you would be triggering a new buff, and then that would have the chance to fuel Dormammu's power through Mystic Dispersion and trigger a degen on yourself through his signature ability, which is... Uh, each time buff expires on the opponent, Dormammu has a one, up to a 100% chance to, to degenerate them for roughly 7,000 direct damage over 10 seconds. And I believe this damage scales. It's not just a, a flat number, because if it was a flat number, it would be a lot less intimidating. So the degen is also direct damage, which means it can't really be reduced by most champions. So back in the day, this was really scary. This was terrifying. And Awakened Dormammu was extremely dangerous. But ever since, I would say maybe Human Torch came out, and there's definitely a couple of others that are good Dormammu counters, he has not been a threat on defense at all. And ever since Mystic Dispersion changed, he has not been a threat to really any defender at all, except for heavy, heavy buff defenders, which you wouldn't want to use against him anyway. But for the time that he had that relevancy, he was worth it. He was worth investing in for defense because he was a good defender. But offensively, he had some really interesting tricks. So he was immune to bleed and poison. How he's not immune to incinerate at this stage in the game baffles me. They updated Ghost Rider. I don't see why they shouldn't update Dormammu just to make him a little more relevant and make it make sense that he's, you know, on fire and he's not immune to incinerate. Just never made sense to me. In my opinion, he should also be immune to Nova Flame, but, you know, that's a that's a conversation for another day. But I think adding that immunity would help him out a lot. And you just need to give him a bit of a damage bump and a bit of a sustainability bump because his block proficiency for the size character that he is is very bad. 58%. I mean, champions of this rank and rarity, they should be in the mid-60s, maybe even the, the high 60s, low 70s. Not saying every character needs that, but to have 58% block proficiency, that's not very good, especially for a big, bulky guy like Dormammu, you know? You would expect him to have 64, 65, where parries and going for block baits and reparries are not going to cost you health, you know? And you'll see that in some of the clips that you, you do lose a little bit of health just taking block hits. So, yeah. It also doesn't help that Dormammu has negative physical resistance. So, even that is adding to the damage that you take on block. So, just something that I've always thought was a bit strange for Dormammu. Now, before anyone jumps and says, you know, he has good utility, he can't have good damage. I understand that. And I get why they didn't want to give him insane damage and insane utility. It makes sense. But... 
there is a certain level of damage that is acceptable to have when you have good utility, and Dormammu really doesn't have that at all. He's not good for short form, he's not good for medium form, he's not good for long form, he's not good for Everest. He is not a very good attacker in the sense of, oh, I want to use this character because they have the damage and the utility to get me through a matchup. He has the utility, but it's just going to take you so long, and rather than using Dormammu who has above average utility for the Mystic class and below average damage, you're going to use somebody who has above average damage and maybe average utility and find a similar or better result because they're going to finish the fight faster, which means they're going to lose less health, which means there's less to worry about dying or using potions or so on and so forth. But let's talk about his utility. So... He has this dark energy, and it all mixes into the damage he deals and in, in the utility and how powerful his utility can be. Um, it scales with the opponent's power bar going down up to 100, and when you get 100 charges, you become imbued, and you'll notice it's a green icon when you're imbued. Um, you gain 50 dark energy for each buff you nullify, so if you're nullifying buffs with your special one, you will ramp up your dark energy very, very quickly. Now, I've always been under the impression, or, or, or I've always been in the camp of his attack rating should scale with his dark energy. There are some synergies that do that, but I think that would be in the base kit, and it just makes sense to me, you know? His heavy attack... This is the main loop of damage. If there is no soul bond on the target, place one on the target. And when the soul bond is active, the dark energy charges you gain also charge the soul bond up to 100. So ideally, you start a fight, parry heavy, you get that soul charge, and then uh, draining the opponent's power with either your second medium, which drains up to 7.5% of their power without giving them power, good utility, Either doing that or baiting a special so their power goes down, you build up both the dark energy and the soul bar. So, let's talk about the finishing a combo with a medium, like I mentioned. This this um, attack does not give power to the opponent. So, if you go medium-medium, your second medium does not give any power, and it drains 7.5% of the target's max power. If you're imbued, you deal direct damage based on the power you burn. It's not a power drain, it becomes a power burn if you're imbued. So, it's actually strange. He's one of the only characters in the game that has both power drain and power burn. Very fascinating, very unique, but, you know, it's, it's unique, but it's, it's not worth using. Then we have the special attack. So the special one, it nullifies one positive effect off the opponent, but if you're imbued, it nullifies all buffs. That's decent. Decent utility to have. It's very easy to get imbued, so it's very easy to keep it as well. One thing I will say about the medium attack, if you consume the the power, if you use your medium attack, I believe that consumes your imbued charges and you have to re-ramp them. So be careful if you want to keep your imbued for later. Your special two, it has a 100% chance to power lock the opponent. So it's not an enervate, it's a power lock. So power gain and combat power rate is re is prevented. So that's nice. And if you're imbued, the hits drain 20% of max power, which is solid. It's a very strong power drain. It's very easy to stay imbued. And this special two, as you know, it doesn't have any damage whatsoever, but it has a utility with power control. So it's decent. And then the special three, he gains a dimensional link buff, causing Dormammu to continuously gain dark energy for 20 seconds. Now, I think this is kind of sort of bugged, and you'll see in the clips where I, I show off using the special three, if I even do that, which I'm not sure if I do. But this might be bugged, and if it is, and I confirm that, I'll let the, the team know. But this gives you a dimensional link, and if you're imbued, you gain an empowered dimensional link. While it's active, Dormammu will regenerate 25% of damage dealt by the soul barb, the soul bond detonation and you detonate the soul bond by using a heavy attack at however many charges the soul bond has up to 100 so how does this look in content how does he actually feel we're back to on, on the testing map this is a rank 5 sig 200 or it might be sig 140 in the testing but it's rank 5 ascended dormammu with the scarlet witch relic like i said we start the fight with a heavy attack you're gonna see me power drain proxima here that gives me about 30 charges of each uh what's it called dark energy and also the soul bond and now the name of the game is just keep her power at bay and now i can go for a heavy attack if i want to but i'm going to go for a special two after i detonate this and bait her special or i just not going to bait special at all actually and we go for a special two of my own I do not get the power drain because i'm not imbued but after th she throws this special one i should be imbued yep 
So now I have my imbued passive. I have 100 charges. Now I go for a heavy attack. Another 26,000 damage burst. Not great, but you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, I guess. Now I go for my special two. There's the power burn. Now what I should have done was full comboed and ended on a light attack to give her even more power because this is less damage than I would have dealt if I were at 100 charges of the soul bond. But you can see that this is taking quite a while and I've taken 15% of my health in just block damage. I haven't been hit one time. This is all just block hits that have essentially killed me. You can see there I go for my special two, consume my imbued, and I drain her power to zero, and then I get another heavy detonate right there. And that was one minute and 19 seconds for class advantage against a non-defender in Proxima Midnight. Um, no boosts, no synergies with a relic. Just, uh, just not good. Just not good at all. Now, I do want to show off a matchup where you can utilize his power control. Now, this is Hyperion, rank 3, 7 stars, say 200. Starting the fight off with a heavy attack. If one, th if there's one thing I cannot take away from Dormammu, it's that he has very, very decent power control. That is about the only thing he has, though, because the damage is non-existent. E especially from a 6-star rank 5 Ascended Champion with class advantage, you would hope that the damage was just a little higher than this. But I gotta say, even with the lack of damage, the power control is truly undeniable. You're seeing the, the signature ability come into play there with the D-Gen. That D-Gen is actually dealing an okay amount of damage. I wish it was a little higher. Uh, I think Dormammu would be the perfect recipient of like a value buff, putting in putting him in like a uh, either the new Titan Crystal or a 7-star Crystal that was a limited pool. I think he'd be perfect for something like that. Even like the Gifted Guardians, you know, if it wasn't Purgatory, I would have loved it to be Dormammu. But, you know, we're getting Purgatory and there's nothing we can really do about that. I like her though, so it's fine probably make a video about her at some point but as you can see we are maintaining a decent amount of health here and Hyperion he's he's ticking down you know it's not the most damage in the world but it definitely works like you can use Dormammu and get decent results but he was just so close to being that perfect dual threat where oh he's got decent damage and really good power control and if you play well you don't have to worry about losing too much health he was almost that he just he just needs some damage scaling with the imbued passive, increasing both the hit damage and also the damage from the soul bond, and a little more sustainability, and I honestly think he'd be a fantastic, fantastic character. Now, I'm finishing off this video with a full synergy showcase. All the synergies here are increasing the damage from the imbued passive and giving him... Um, it's all just basically more damage. Like, that's all he's gaining from the synergies here is more damage and... The chance to place soul barbs on light attack or uh, charges of the soul bond on light attack. He gains that from another synergy. But all the synergy team really brings is more damage. So you're going to see the damage does go up like 8k mediums now instead of 5k. The special two, you know, 11k crits there, not bad. And then I go for the detonate after I build up to the 100 uh, dark energy charges again. So that's 37k, that's 11,000 more damage than he dealt without the Synergy team. So it's definitely more, you know, it's definitely more damage. But I'm trying to bait a special 2 here, just so I don't have to use my own special 2. And then, now I go for a special 2 of my own. I don't want to uh, use it at that time, because I wanted to get him to 100 charges. So now I charge another heavy, and that deals 27,000 damage, because I wasn't at my full dark energy if you're imbued you get an additional attack rating and the dark and the attack rating i think scales with the dark energy with this synergy team but even with full synergy right even with a full synergy team increasing his attack rating increasing the overall damage you deal with the soul bond as well this is still a 70 second fight so it's not terrible but it's just kind of in the same vein of dr strange where it's just not good for really anything you know because fights are only going to go up these are smaller health pools you know fights with bigger health pools bigger attack ratings dormammu is not going to be doing anything so in my personal opinion dormammu would be the perfect recipient of a value buff in 2025 and if you want to go even further you give him like a moderate update so in the scale of updates in mcoc or buffs there's value there's moderate and then there's a full rework i don't think dormammu needs a full rework i think the ideas in his kit 
are nice and they could work very well with some modern 2024 uh, renovations to them. But overall, I don't think he needs too much. I think he just needs some damage scaling with the dark energy and some more sustainability. And then I think he would be so incredible. I think he'd be an amazing attacker, great utility, good on defense too. He could be a dual threat, be an incredible 7 star as well. So let me know what you guys think of Dormammu. He was almost special, almost something special. That's the title of this video or the thumbnail of this video. So yeah, let me know what you think about Dormammu. And thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you have not already, and hit the bell for notifications if that's something you're into. Get notified every time I upload and every time I go live. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.